everybody, it's me, Dan Classic, and today we're going to be doing Series 2 of the WWF LJN Wrestling Superstars, and I don't want to wait anymore. I can't wait. We should just get started, but in case you didn't see Series 1, check out the link in the description, all right? It's down there. Go watch that. Then come back and watch this, but without any further ado, Raz Holly, hit my fucking music! It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. It's 1985. Back to the Future is the highest grossing film of the year. Arms are sent to Iran in exchange for hostages in Lebanon and profits for Nicaraguan Contras. The comic strip Calvin and Hobbes debuts. And holy shit, the first Nintendo Entertainment System is sold in the United States. But fuck all that shit. Series 2 of the LJN WWF Wrestling Superstars is unleashed on the public. 1985 is probably one of the most crucial years in the history of the WWF slash E. After all, the very first WrestleMania takes place on March 31st of that year. The company explodes onto the mainstream after which... And with an already strong lineup of nine figures in the Wrestling Superstars line, LJN adds six more figures for 1985 to round out the roster nicely. Now why do you think they only released six and not five? Could this be in reference to the Pentagram? The Pentagon? Pentagon Jr.? What is the WWF trying to hide? I smell a conspiracy, gorilla. You're really reaching, body, and I told you to stop calling me gorilla. Anyway, let's kick things off in the same place we started last time. Remember the Series 1 Andre with the gumby hands and the face that nobody would recognize as Andre the Giant? Well, the crown jewel of Series 2 is this Andre the Giant with a similar pose but a sculpt that was not only current with Andre's look in 1985, but looks as much like the person it's supposed to depict as any in the entire line. Shit, this Andre, face-wise, looks better than most of the Jax and Mattel figures that followed years later depicting Andre the Giant. My Andre in particular was dirty as fuck when it arrived. A little rubbing alcohol and some elbow grease, and this thing looks pretty great. I paid 30 bucks for this figure, and it's the most I've paid for an LJN figure so far. And looking ahead to Series 4, it's nothing compared to what I may have to pay in the future. Next up is Greg the Hammer Valentine. The likeness is okay, and his pose is pretty good too. He can drop an elbow, and since mine can't stand up for shit... You can lean him on our next figure, Brutus Beefcake. Most fans remember Brute Eye as the WWF's barber and perennial Hulk Hogan hanger on. Interesting now that even he's come around to admit that the Hulkster has asshole tendencies. Hey, I'm not gonna sit here and listen to you badmouth the Hulkster, brother. Oh, fuck off, fanboy. He drew lots of money, and yeah, he was the biggest star that the sport of professional wrestling had seen until that point. But he did do some fucked up shit. He wasn't infallible, you know. Dead classic, what are you gonna do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? If you hurt my what? You what are you doing? Pride, I gotta be. 
Anyway, Beefcake is a pretty good figure. And like his partner, he can be found online for around 15 bucks. And so far in the series, we've got two tag teams, but both of the teams are heels so far. Ah, it looks like another conspiracy. No! Ah! No! Bad, Governor! Bad! The next figure is one of my favorites. Known for his signature green tongue, furry torso, and snacking on turnbuckles, it's George the Animal Steel. And look at this figure. It's a great likeness. There's no mistaking who this is supposed to be. This really exemplifies what I love about the LJN wrestling superstars. From the gear, to the sculpted body hair, right down to the signature green tongue on a great face sculpt. There is nothing generic about this figure. And if I were only going to get a handful of these figures, this would definitely be one. Next is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is another great figure. Mine's been touched up. I didn't do it, obviously. Oh well, it's a great excuse for me to strip the paint down and make it look, well, wonderful. And lastly is King Kong fucking Bundy. He's big and ugly, much like his real-life counterpart. And as a bonus, he's one of the LJN wrestling superstars that you could kill a man with if you hit him hard enough. I swear this thing weighs at least a pound. Listen to him take a bump. Wow! King Kong Bundy is certainly the most deadly figure in Series 2, or at least the one that I would choose to use as a weapon. Ow. Anyway, that's the end of Series 2, and we've got Series 3 coming up next. So be on the lookout for that. And we've got some big stars headed our way in Series 3, including, oh yeah, the Macho Man. So be on the lookout for that. I know you're real excited for it. I'm real excited for it. But for now, whoo, whoo, I'm done, man. This is it. This is the end of the video, and I need some refreshment. Ah, that was refreshing. So anyway, I'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show. And guess what? Go down here. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. We've got way more videos on this channel for you to check out with me and Raz Holly and the rest of the gang doing cool shit like action figure reviews and stuff like that. And they're all great videos. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, click the link, go to the next video, and I'll see you next time.